So, your dog has some anxiety, I saw? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and fill me in on your, on your dog here. Um, you know, we got him at the little uh, stressful uh, time, you know, like not stressful in a way, we, we had to move, uh, right? Uh, we had a big house in the uh, Moline area, okay. you know, and then uh, my husband retired, and we are kind of trying to downsize, and we sold all that. Okay. So he saw, you know, a lot of packing, and I know, like, uh, they get nervous with that. And then me also, I had to, my nephew got sick and I had to go to India and leave him for uh, two months, you know, mm -hmm. right around that time. It was just, uh, I think, you know, he developed that anxiety because of not seeing me. And then, uh, unfortunately, that, uh, uh, like uh, two years ago, I went to India and thinking it's only for a year, year I mean a month, mm -hmm. for my parents are there, that's why I had to go. Mm -hmm. And um, when I left, you know, my nephew who lived in Utah, I took him. He said he'll keep him and he's, he was with him. He's mm -hmm. very fond of me. Mm -hmm. And they have a little one too, you know. Okay. Um, and then uh, the COVID came, mm -hmm. we couldn't. Uh, meet him for, I couldn't uh, oh, sure. uh, see him for six months, he ended up stay, staying with him okay. after six months. Wow. So, and then he came, in the beginning when he came, he was nervous, he would come to me and then he would run back to my nephew. Mm. And he was like that, you know, like a little bit back and forth, you know, and then okay. finally he kind of knew that I would stay, I, I don't know, he was nervous, maybe I'll leave him. Maybe. Sure. So then, you know, like uh, those are the anxiety things I think maybe bother him, you know, like, uh, you know. Okay. Um, and also, like, because I don't stay in one place. Okay. I, uh, my son is in California, I go visit him, I come, my daughter is here in Chicago, mm -hmm. and we have a place in Florida. Mm -hmm. So we're moving, you know, and I think that makes him, I mean, I'm, I'm going to different places, Correct. you know, and not staying in one place. Correct. You know? So, uh, even though he loves all of them, but it uh, seems like uh, uh, he's trained, you know, he, he knows he's not supposed to go inside. But okay. he will, I think it's purposely, like he, when he's bored or whatever, or like, uh, he does it on um, my daughter's dog, big dog. He's 13 years old. He's old actually. Mm -hmm. He uh, went and uh, peed on his bed okay. a couple times. Maybe jealousy, I sure. don't know. And then uh, um, also he will go and pee on the kids' toys okay. <laughs> on my daughter's uh, bed. Okay. Like on the end, or oh, sure. he has done even on the pillow a couple of times. Is he, is he fixed? Yeah. He's neutered? Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know what makes him do that. I don't like that. And also barking. Okay. You know, when he sees uh, anybody walking or, uh, you know, like, uh, sees the dogs, you know, he starts barking, mm -hmm. you know, like, when he's outside, he doesn't bark when he sees the dogs. He just pulls me more. Mm -hmm. um, but when he's inside, you know, like, he sees somebody walking in through the window, he will bark. Okay. Yeah, and um, like when people come, you know, he gets very excited and he wants to jump and uh, nip. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't bite, but he likes to nip. And for the other people, for me, I know he doesn't nip me as much. He does to other people. Mm, when he's excited? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, and then um, like uh, mainly those are the things, you know, barking and, you know, not. Uh, uh, when I take him for a walk, he's fine, but mainly pulling. Mm. He wants to pull, and I have a lot of times with other dogs with me too, so I don't know whether he wants to be the leader or whatever it is. Mm. It's like little, this thing. But when, we, when it is me and him, we have no problems. Everything he listens to me. But when something else is going on, he doesn't want to. Gotcha. He gets very excited and doesn't listen. Okay. And I don't want him to have these problems continuously, you know, and, you know, I feel bad, you know, that uh, I didn't give him the full attention I did, like, 
my uh, the dog I had before. You know, mm -hmm. I only had to eat the second one. You're so, okay. The first one was uh, like uh, I lost him for too much, you know, mm -hmm. way too much. So when he's six years old, so this guy came without me looking for him. Mm -hmm. He was brought uh, to one of my friend's uh, sister, mm -hmm. because she's a little, you know, down and she has some problems. Mm -hmm. So they thought that might help, you know, mm -hmm. having a dog and brought him um, for a Mother's Day and she didn't want anything to do with it. Okay. So my friend remembered me that I lost a year ago right. you know, my dog and she thought, you know, and then he came, she brought, I said, I'm not ready, I, I, it's too painful. But uh, she brought him and uh, uh, later on I found out that he was born exactly one day before mm. Kanna Day. Wow. And his personality is so much like him. Mm. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> sure. Weird kind of, you know. One yeah. year, uh, he came one year and then he's, uh, you know, um, same that he did before he was born. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of things I think about him. He's a good guy, mm -hmm. just needs some, some help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so he's a year old? No, oh. four years. Four years. Oh, okay, because I'm sorry, I thought you said your, your, your other dog had passed a year ago. No, no, no. When he came, it was a year after. That. After, okay, I see. That makes sense. So he he's, came a year after. So he's four years old. Uh, and then you were gone for a time, you know, yeah. family stuff. Um, and then now, so you moved from California to Florida and then here. Yeah. Okay. Back and forth. Back and forth. He goes with me everywhere now. I see. Except when I go to India, I leave him okay. uh, with uh, either my nephew or my housekeeper is there. He loves her, you know, and mm -hmm. all that, you know, like, so he's very fond of <laughs> people. Okay. Um, during that time, or when, 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 um, uh, what was my question? Um, when did you start to see these, these, these anxieties and problems? Like, uh, is this more recent? Is this like since you've had him? I think he might have uh, started having it uh, the first time when I went to India and I came back. I felt that, you know, he was more nervous. But okay. I think he's just that kind. Mm. He's more like, yeah. You know, up and you know, aware of things, everything, and you know, like very um, mm, conscious of everything that's happening around him. You know, uh -huh. like even in the middle of the night, you know, like he hears the smallest thing, he gets up. You know, like uh, <laughs> sure. So he's yeah. very alert. Yeah, very alert. Yeah. Okay. Um, very protective of me and all that stuff too. Yeah. So okay. He's a good guy. And in protective, do you mean like? Um, uh, is it uh, when with other dogs, with people? Like, how is he protecting you? Like, how's how's what does that look like? Uh, if you, if uh, even people like sometimes you know like when they come with the coat or like this thing, he gets kind of nervous and he will start barking at them. Mm -hmm. and if he if he feels they're strangers, but uh, the other dogs, uh, if they come too close to me, he gets a little. Uh, okay, but, like and this is outside, like on a walk. Yeah. I see. Um, anything else? eats well, he poops, and I mean, everything is fine, you mm -hmm. know, like, except, you know, when he wants to do that, you know. With the, with the, the, the peeing in the, or the potting in the home, um, has that always been a thing, or has that been more recent? No, no, it's been a thing for a while. Okay. Uh, and he does that to my son's pillow, too, and bed. I don't know why, my son and daughter gets it. Okay. <laughs> when we go to California to his house, sure. he does that to him. So I don't know anything, you know, I have no idea. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it sounds like marking behavior. Yeah. Um, when, when you, uh, w w did he come potty trained or did you guys no, potty train him? Did. You did. Yeah. How did you potty train him? Taking him out. Probably I should have kept him in the crate, you know, rather mm -hmm. than I'm taking him out, you know, like every, now we're in the beginning and okay. like normal, you know, like sure. take him out, yeah. Sure. Um, cause it sounds like it was 
it's marking behavior. Yeah. Um, how often does he go out the potty now? Um, I usually let him three to four times. Okay, that's yeah. about normal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then like at your place here in Chicago, he doesn't, does he mark in the, in the home? He doesn't in my condo, but he does it at uh, Shanti's, my daughter's house. That's what, where he does. He mm -hmm. does it on her bed, you know, side of the bed, uh, like on the blanket, if a blanket is mm -hmm. there on the corner, or he's done it on the pillow, like well. up on the bed and it on the pillow. Okay, yeah, that really sounds like marking behavior for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I don't really think it's anything potty training based. Yeah, I don't think so either, yeah. I feel strongly because when I'm in Florida in my condo there, you know, he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. He just goes down and does it in the house he never does it. Okay. So it only happens either at my son's house or here. And they my son has a dog and my daughter has a dog. Oh so, sure. So potentially because yeah I can see that. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um so what are you hoping to or looking to accomplish with with your dog? I want him to um, sit. He sits when I tell him to sit, but I want him to stay sit when I say, you know, I don't like barking and jumping at people and barking is the other one. Mainly those are the things, you know. Okay. I would like to. Um, how does he walk on the leash? Does he pull a lot? Oh, he pulls. Okay. Um, do you ever let him off leash? To like run and play? He, he does it very well, but I'm scared like because sometimes when he's excited, he just will run, you know, that's why I can't do it here. You mm -hmm. know, he, when I lived in uh, my home, you know, like it was more possible that he would just, you know, mm -hmm. but here it's, uh, I'm afraid to leave him off the leash. Uh -huh. much. Okay. So, but that's something you'd like to be able to do? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so with with the obedient stuff, the sit and the come and all that, like that's always easy, okay? Yeah, mostly he come. Um, it's really the um, the barking, um, the marking, mm -hmm. the, the peeing on the pillows and stuff. That's uh, like harder to fix, okay? Mm -hmm. um, before uh, booking the consultation, did you read on how we train and the tools that we use? Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, with, the, with the e-collar? Yeah, yeah. Are you right. familiar with the e-collars? Yes, the, for the barking, I put some uh, uh, for a little bit. He did better, and uh -huh. then when I stopped, you know, he... He started barking it. again. Yeah. So the, the bark collar and the e-collar are, are, are very similar. Okay. Except the bark collar only works when he's barking. Okay. Right. With the e-collar, it works when you press the button. Okay. So you control the collar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Oh yeah, my son, my daughter's son, a dog has it, I think. You know, the e-collar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes they use it for like electronic fence. Okay. So the dog won't run away from the yard. Yeah. So that's another. Same. It's the same technology. Yeah. So with the e-collar, um, it's a miniaturized tens unit. Are, are you familiar with, with, with what a tens unit is? No. It's a, um, it's a machine. Have you ever been to a chiropractor or physical therapist? No. no? It's a machine. It's, uh, they got circles yeah, yeah. and they put on the muscles okay. and it moves the muscles. Okay. okay? So uh, it's just a muscle stimulator. Okay. People, when they think of e-collar, they usually think like they're shocking the dog. Okay. It's not electricity. It's okay. not like electric. It's more like, uh, doing this. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's just yeah. the twitch on the, okay. on, on the muscle yeah. and there's different intensities. Okay. Um, our collar has 127 levels. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say with the bark collar, yeah. let's say the bark collar has like seven levels and ours like 127. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same, except we have 120 more um, divisions. Mm -hmm. So it's more nuanced, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas with the bark collar, because it just wants to stop the barking, mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care about, yeah, um, yeah exactly. They, they just want to stop the barking, right? So the ones that we use are very refined so that you can go 40, you know, 60, 50, 49, 51. You can really fine tune it to the dog in the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the obedient stuff is easy to teach with the e-collar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we always teach is how to walk on a leash, mm -hmm. which is walking with you, no pulling, mm -hmm. um, and then no reactivity, no barking at dogs or anything like that. Um, and then we see what does that fix? Okay, so when we get problems in the home, 
um, like even the marking potentially can be addressed with discipline and structure, okay? So I get dogs that like chew up the house and stuff and, and it's because they're frustrated. And then we do the healing exercise and then all that stops, okay? So when we do the healing exercise, it's so you can walk your dog and he doesn't pull anymore. Um, if a dog comes too close to you, he shouldn't bark. If he tries to bark, we can correct it. Uh, and then we see what does that, how does that help him inside the house? And how does that help him with the anxiety? Okay. Okay. So you're correct in the sense of moving from Florida to Chicago to California. It's, there's no structure. Okay. Even though, you know, and I know it's the same three places for him, he's not meant to move that often. Yeah. Right. So there has to be some kind of consistency. So the structure, the, the, the discipline, the heel is consistent. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in Florida, Chicago, or California, when you walk with him and you use the e-collar, it's always the same. Mm -hmm. So it helps him uh, uh, be calmer or should help him be calmer because of that consistency. Okay. okay? It's like rules, right? There's the same rule. Like you can't, running a red light is illegal in Chicago. Running a red light is illegal in Florida. Running a red light in, uh, in uh, California is legal, right? It's consistent. Mm -hmm. So when we travel, we know these rules don't really change. Mm -hmm. So same thing for him. Having rules that don't change help him mm -hmm. uh, adapt and, right. in, the, in the environments more quickly, okay? So we always teach the heel first. Um, it's usually two classes. Um, I um, typically teach the client to train their dog and then you're, you train him and do your homework for the week. Okay, and then we see how things play out. Um, when it comes to correcting the barking in the home, because uh, you said this is when people come over, right? Yeah. And then is this also like when you hear sounds outside? Yeah. Is, is, it, is it a lot or is it sometimes he barks and sometimes he doesn't care? No, mostly he will, uh, if he hears that somebody think he, uh, you know, the mailman comes, he will do it. Okay. It's like anybody comes closer to the house. He, sure, he's barking. Yeah. Okay. And this is something that you want to kind of uh, uh, minimize, right? Yeah. I mean, barking once or twice is okay, but going excited and knocking on the window, like going crazy. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get you. I don't want that. Yes. So when it comes to the barking, we have to correct that. Yeah. Okay. So like you're correct in the sense of having the bark collar. Yeah. The problem is, is when you take the bark collar off, now he knows there's no consequence yeah. and then he's going to bark. Yeah. Okay. So I have, um, I have, uh, yeah, just hold your leash. So, um, potentially teaching him how to walk correctly mm -hmm. can also minimize the barking because he's not going to be so frustrated. Okay. Oh. If nothing changes, not a big deal. Um, I will show you how to correct them for the barking, even without the collar. Okay. Cause if you use your bark collar or your e collar, which you can, the moment you take it off, he's going to bark again. Okay. So there has to be another means of stopping the behavior. Okay. That's usually just like a class. Um, and then when people come over, you said like, he's very excited and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and like barking and jumping. Mm -hmm. uh, we can cover that as well. Uh, there's different ways of approaching that. Uh, we use like a dog bed a lot of times. So mm -hmm. if we tell a dog to go to the dog bed, mm -hmm. they can't jump and run and bark at the, at the guest. Mm -hmm. So that's covered as well. Uh, and we can also cover come when cold. Um, and with e-collar, you can get off leash control um, so that you can go to the park and you can let him off the leash and he can run around, but you have the ability to bring him back, okay? Um, uh, and all this is due to the e-collar because you don't need to have the leash anymore. You can press the button and still communicate with him that he needs to do something, okay? okay. So um, when it comes to the training, were you wanting to do like one-on-one -on -one or are you trying to send them to be trained and then... then uh, what is best? Uh, what do you, what, what's the best? It depends. Um, I always tell clients that it's best that they train the dog themselves because yeah. you learn more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's a big pro. Uh, the, 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 the con is that it takes longer, right? So think of one week of your time as, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one week of our time is three weeks of your time. Okay. So we teach things 
very quickly here because it's what we do all day. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the pro to having them come here for training is that we get it done faster. The con is the training's tied to us and now we got to transfer the training to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for your case, both of those are an option for you. Uh, I would suggest that people do the training themselves. The other con would be, you know, winter's going to be coming pretty right. soon. Um, little dogs tend not to do well in the cold weather, mm -hmm. uh, but technically speaking, like training still applies, right? So that's just something to bear in mind um, is that your training might kind of slow down if you're doing it yourself because we don't really hang outside yeah. a whole lot. I mean, if I were you, I'd go to California or Florida yeah. there in the winter time. <laughs> and then actually, I have to go to India, you know, like end of December. Okay. So this is uh, another thing, you know, like, um, and I'll be gone for two months. I see. And then is he going to go with what, your son or no. your daughter? Yeah, my, I know my housekeeper. Oh, your housekeeper. In Florida. I see. So then it doesn't really matter too much, but like, let's say you leave for two months and the housekeeper is not doing any training with him. Yeah. You're going to come back and you're probably going to have to restart a little bit. Okay. okay? Because that's, uh, what are we, we're in November now, yeah. so you're only going to be here for another month and a half or so, right? Yeah. Then you're going to travel for two months and then come back. So um, what I would probably do is if you did training is wait till you're back. Wait till you come back from India. Oh. Because if you did the, the training yeah. um, and then you leave at end of December, one with the cold weather, you probably may not be doing a whole lot of training anyways with the snow. But then if you leave for two months and you come back, you're probably going to have to restart again. Okay. Um, you can start now if you like. Um, but I've, uh, how do you say, that's what I would expect to yeah. happen. Okay. So um, either of them is an option for you. Uh, so if I teach you how to train them, what's nice about it is that if you did travel and you came back, um, you know, it's, it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty common sense based mm -hmm. um, that you can just pick up your tools and start training again mm -hmm. and everything should be fine. Okay. Otherwise, if you come back and you've, you've forgotten like how to use the collar or like mm -hmm. the exercises and stuff yeah. like that, uh, dogs take time to train. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be the only thing that I could, uh, that would say might be, might inhibit your training. Okay. Uh, Cause if you stayed here with your daughter, it'd be uh, easier because then if your daughter came to training and then you left and your daughter would keep doing the training yeah. and then you came back, everything stays the same, yeah. right? You don't really lose any progress yeah. there, okay? Now, you can also teach your housekeeper yeah. as long as she's... I'm going to repeat each other. Okay, as long as she's willing to practice and apply what you teach her, then when you come back, everything should be fine, okay? okay. Um, so, in terms of, so you'd like to walk your dog without pulling, mm -hmm. come when called so you can have them run around off leash, mm -hmm. uh, people coming over, with the barking and stuff, barking out the window, and then just like his general just behavior with new places. That's correct, mm -hmm. right? Um, so in terms of length of time, I would probably say at minimum six classes, um, maybe nine classes, okay? Because then uh, if you end up leaving, because six gives us hopefully enough time before you leave to India in December, end of December. Um, is leash walking, typically takes two classes for the heel. Um, the barking stuff, typically one class, mm. okay? Um, the telling him to stay put in that move, like go to a dog bed stuff, when guests come over, typically one class. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to come and call stuff, usually about a class, mm -hmm. okay? So that's about five classes. And that leaves the sixth class as kind of like a variable, okay? Mm -hmm. So that, let's say there's something you want to review, we can cover it again. Or like, let's say you do five classes, you go to Florida, you go to India, you come back next year, and then you have your sixth class. Like, like I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it's pretty simple. As long as you're doing your homework, uh, just do bear in mind that, you know, winter's gonna come and then you'll be out in the snow. Mm -hmm. um, because when we do the come when called, mm -hmm. come when called takes the longest to teach because you gotta go to the park, you gotta put them on the leash, let them run around and play, and then call him. Yeah. Okay, so that takes the longest to teach. What about at home, my home, you know, we have backyard, you know? So you can practice there too. The yeah. only problem is, um, he'll be great in the backyard, but, then, but when you go to the park, he's gonna not be so great. That's correct, okay? So, so recall requires more work. Oh. And like, let's say 
you trade him here. He's great in Chicago. And then you take him to California. Mm -hmm. Well, now you get to practice in California. Yeah. And then you take him to Florida. Well, now you get to practice in Florida, right? Eventually, you you can get it to where he just does it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just going to take you more time to practice. Yes, and patience because you have three different you know places that you move to with him. Okay. Um, but it, it's pretty easy. It's just a matter of like taking the time to go and then go to the park and then practice. Okay. So, uh, what's nice about like a board and train is that, uh, since we do all the training, when you pick him up, he already kind of knows everything, but now you have to practice so that he learns to do it for you. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, depending on how you approach it, um, because if you did the six, depending on when you can get started on my calendar, cause, um, um, there's other people booking and stuff is let's say you don't start to the end of November. Well, now we only have like four weeks for training mm -hmm. or something before you have to travel mm -hmm. with the board and train. It's easier because you can get them in sooner, mm -hmm. start the training. Uh, and then you work with Enrique, who's my other trainer and he does all the board and train dogs here. Okay. So then he would follow up with you for the training. Um, and he has a more open schedule than I do. Okay. And Maria will help you with all that stuff too. Um, but in regards to like, um, what I would recommend for you, I think six classes is, is pretty good. Nine would be if you want to have more control. Now at the end of the six classes, he's not going to be fully trained yet, mm -hmm. right? You'll, you will just yeah, know what, what to do exactly. And then it's just practice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, questions on any of that stuff? No, no. Like, um, I'm just thinking, you know, like, uh, mm, this is uh, most of, huh, close to the, if I did uh, one class mm -hmm. this week, if, I mean, I'm not sure if it's available even. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be at least a week or two before you get started. Yeah. Because since you've um, submitted your form, we've had other consultation requests. We have other clients that are starting and they're picking their classes. So what happens is, is when um, you, um, you know, uh, Maria would email you and then she starts to, because she has to look at your calendar, she looks at my calendar yeah. and picks a time. And then, um, so yeah, I'm not sure when the start, when you'd be able to start. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have daytime availability like this, this yeah, is easier yeah. because no one really books for this oh, time. Oh, I'm good with the daytime. Okay. It's actually better for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, usually this time is pretty open. Yeah. Um, so Maria would know all that stuff. Okay. Um, but the, uh, she just has to process everybody before you, right? Because, because it's a line to get started again, oh. because you booked your consultation, but then I had like three consultations yesterday. Oh. So now they're contacting Maria, right? Yeah. So, um, depending on, um, so they can availability easier, uh, as long as I'm available. Um, if you want to speed up the process, which you can do is you can email Maria and tell her, Hey Maria. I would like to move forward. Um, I want six classes and I'm available during the day, during the week. And then uh, this way she has your schedule already. So six classes, if I take six, six classes, you know, like uh, do you do every day or? Uh, oh, we do once a week. Only once a week. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you did every day, it wouldn't help you okay. because it's too much information. I see. You need a week to practice. Okay. okay? Which if you're able to get started with, uh, do you, do you know what date in September you're, you're leaving to India? This is November. Uh, no, you mean December? End December. Yeah, right. end of December. Yeah, end, okay. The 28th. The 28th. Yeah. Okay, so like after Christmas, like, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to be in Florida, you know, part of that time, yeah. Oh, I see. So, but you'll be here until December 28th. No, I'll oh. be here only until 15th. Oh, I see. So we're here in a small yeah. window. Okay, so um, let me look at my calendar. Even if we did it every four days, five now that some, so we could do something like that. Yeah, three days, four days. I don't know. Let me see. One, two, three, four. So you leave on Wednesday. So we have like four and a half weeks, mm. technically speaking. Okay, so I would have to talk to Maria, mm -hmm. and I would let her know, mm -hmm. and then. Um, um, 
And then there's a Thanksgiving tour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, are you doing a Thanksgiving? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, that's going to be a bit... How long are you leaving for Thanksgiving? Uh, two weeks again. Two weeks again? Okay, so you're really here. Yeah. I see, yeah. So, I mean... I'm here for 20 days, you know, like, uh, um, 20, I mean, almost 18 days, you know, in uh, December. I see. Mm, so, if, uh, No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so... Every four days, if we can do it, we might get in, you know... As long as we... High classes. Yeah, as long as we... I'd have to talk to her yeah. to let her know okay. so that she can, because now, because that's kind of a special case. Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah. I would rather she does it and then I, at least I have two weeks with him before I go to India. That way I, I'm, I'm still doing the same things mm -hmm. with him. And mm -hmm. also before the housekeeper, you know, kind of, you know, sure. and she watches me there uh -huh. and then she can follow, you know, like. Okay. Oh, uh, so yeah, so I can let Maria. Ah, wait till March, you know. Yeah, I, I mean I'm not in a rush. Yeah. Uh, it's completely up to you. Yeah. Um, I, I. Can it be done? Yes. Um, but it all comes down to how well you understand the training, how well he understands the training, right? Okay. So it's very smart. So, um, you can, I'll I can talk to Maria. Okay. And then you can think over it. Okay. Um. A big factor is going to be the weather, yeah. you know, because it's going to get cold and training in the cold is, is more difficult, especially for the little dogs. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I think training in March is probably easier because you're, you're going to be not too far away from spring. Um, and you can even book ahead of time if you'd like. Uh, but uh, we can do either or, either every four days or so, have a class, or you just wait till March mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, start up then. Um, in terms of the collar that he would need, Maria will send you the information. It's uh, it's meant for small dogs like him. It runs around, I think it's like 237 with tax. Um, they last a really long time. It's fully waterproof. You can go swimming in it. You can, you know, the remote's waterproof. Um, and they last a really long time. I've had mine eight years, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so they're a little expensive, but they, so if you take care of them, they last really, really long, okay? Questions on any of that stuff? No, no. Uh, scheduling wise, you know, I wish I came in before and I could have, I've been here the last three months, you know, straight, you know, in Chicago, so I should have called earlier and probably. Sure. Well, the good thing is he's a small dog, yeah. so it's not a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> no. If he was a big dog, it's, it's a little bit more of a bigger problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I could talk to Maria yeah. and then uh, see if she, if, um, if there's anything she can do. Okay. Um, and then you just think about it, whether or not you want to just start in March. I'm not in a rush. You know, if you do come back in March, I suggest uh, at least uh, reach out sooner because in the spring and summer, I it's get really busy. busy. Yeah. I get really busy. I know, I'm going to book now if I'm going to not do it now. I'm going to book for March now, the dates. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Even then, I would I would rather uh, not wait for a whole week. I would rather have like four or five days in between and then do it. You know? Okay. So you can let Maria know. Yeah. And then she can look ahead and take care of all that stuff. So you're already in the calendar. Yeah. Uh, but she'll send you the information on the collar that you would need. You won't need it until you're gonna actually start your program. Uh, we carry them here as well, so you don't have to worry about that stuff in terms of um, because I've had clients buy it really early and then. Later on, if they need to return it, they can't return it because yeah, they've yeah. had it for too long. So yeah. there's no need to get that. Yeah. Um, anything else? No, I think, you know, just want to help him. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I used to have a Bashan. Yeah. yeah. He's a, a mix, a Maltese and Bashan mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're smart. <laughs> he, he has a, that Bashan, you know, like he can stand up on his leg mm -hmm. you know, for a long time. Yeah. He's very energetic and very. Yeah, mine was old. He was he, he got old. He was like thirteen or something like that. Yeah. So, but I had a Michon as well. Yeah. So he's cute. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll talk to Maria, and then she'll reach out, and then you know whatever you want to do, she can help you. Um, okay. You know, get scheduled and all that stuff. Okay. okay. Anything else?
Okay. Yeah, and if you I want to learn as much as as much as I can to sure. help him and uh, as best and as uh, 